If you've been following the Pokemon TCG meta at all, you know Arceus and Talion is everywhere. So what are we gonna do to deal with it? Well, I have a deck idea for you. Hey everybody, Nick from Nine Card TCG, and today we're gonna be looking at an Arceus Lycanroc deck. And Arceus Lycanroc was popular for a little bit. There was an Arceus Lycanroc Beedrill deck that was going around that I personally really loved, but we're gonna be playing a different version of that today, mainly to deal with all these Arceus and Teleon decks that are running around. And as someone who mostly plays Arceus and Teleon, I can tell you that this would be a little bit annoying. But before we get into the deck profile, if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment. Those things tell YouTube this is a good channel and other people should watch it. If you're in the market for some TCG accessories, I'm affiliated with Dragon Shield, link in the video description. Uh, I also have a Twitter and a Discord and you can check out those as well. I just went on a run. It's like 90 degrees and I just went on a run and <laughs> my brain feels, like my whole body just feels like it has been cooked. But anyway, we're gonna head over to PTCGO where we can take a look at this Arceus Lycanroc deck. Arceus V-Star is a 280 health, two prize Pokemon, three, attack, uh, three energies for the Trinity Nova attack, does 200 damage, search your deck for three energies or three basic energies and attach them to your Pokemon V however you like, which means you can attach them to this Arceus, you can attach them to a benched Arceus, you can attach them to our other secondary attacker, which is Lycanroc V, fighting type Pokemon, which by the way, Arceus weak to fighting. And Lycanroc is weak to grass, which is virtually non-existent. So we don't really attack with the fighting though, or with the V, but you could go ahead and hit something with Rock Throw for 40 damage and be like, all right. But Having 200 health means it's going to be pretty easy for Palkia to knock you out. Mew can knock you out pretty easily. Uh, we don't really want to attack with the V. We do want to be attacking with the V max. 320 health still have that grass weakness and a retreat cost of one, which is very, very nice. Hunting Claw is a great attack. You just knock out any one of your opponent's Pokemon that has 60 HP or less. And so if you hit into... Uh, a Pokemon, like, a, I don't know, something that has 220 health, you hit into a, a gen, uh, I don't know, anything. It doesn't matter. You hit into something, if it has 60 health or less, you just use Hunting Claw, KO it. Or, those pesky Dunsparce that Arceus players will use to put down on the bench and remove the fighting weakness from their Arceus, you just go ahead and Hunting Claw it away. Now, your opponent can't come back and one-shot you, because you have way too much health, Arceus and Talion decks thrive on two-shotting things. So they can't one-shot you. They don't have a Dunsparce anymore. Max Edge is going to do well enough, well over the 310 HP that they could have with the Big Charm. Plus, you get to put 30 damage onto a benched Pokemon. So if they have something else that is maybe damaged, or you want to like really put pressure onto a Sobble. This is a good way of you hunting claw a Dunsparce, you one shot an Arceus V-Star, you put 30 damage onto a Sobble. Even if they evolve it, it still has 60 health. Now you can go ahead and hunting claw it again the following turn, get rid of that Sobble, kind of pick apart their consistency pieces. It's a really nice way of dealing with like something like Rapid Strike Urshifu. They get a Sobble onto the bench, hunting claw that thing away. Uh, and what are, what are they going to do? Palkia too. Without their Sobbles and their Drizzlows, they're in a little bit of a tough spot. So we just eliminate and kind of crumble their board. What about Mew? We have the Mighty Ina. Hustle Bark means if there's a VMAX, our attack is free. And we do 160 damage, so it's enough to knock out a Mew VMAX. And uh, we do 50 damage to ourselves. Who cares? We have 110 health. We're probably going to get one shot anyway. We do have a Choice Belt. Now, Choice Belt's really nice because it's going to allow our Lycanroc, our Mighty Ina, if our opponent's Mew has Oracorio in play. Um, but we're going to be able to hit 220 with this Lycanroc, so we're going to be knocking out most Vs if they're if we go first, we evolve first, and uh, we can get some energies onto this Lycanroc. There we go. Now we can, uh, even if we go second, you know, just kind of boss up a V, something like that, and knock it out with Max Edge, put some pressure on the bench. 
It also means that Arky's V-Star can be hitting for anywhere between 210 230 health again, cleanly knocking out some Vs. Bro is pretty important here. Industrious and Sizers, it's going to be a really good draw option for us. And it's also going to help us be Roxanne proof for the most part. We can use a lot of the cards in our hand just to, you know, discard stuff with Ultra Ball and Quick Ball, thin stuff out of the deck. We can dump an Energy Search. We can dump uh, an Evolution Incense, whatever. We can play Pal Pad to, like, put supporters that we might have used or want back. Throw them back into the deck and then draw up to five cards with Bro. So, really nice option there. A couple of Path of the Peaks to stop our opponent from using Star Portal, from using their own uh, Star Burst, from playing uh, whatever Genesex ability is, Fusion Strike System. Collapse Stadium also is going to help in those uh, mirror matches where our opponent wants to build up a strong bench, something like... Uh, Mew, Palkia, Arceus, Inteleon decks, Reggies, whatever, anything that wants to build a strong bench. Collapse Stadium means you can only have four Pokemon in play each, or four Pokemon on the bench each, and yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff going for this deck. We can get some energy and Pokemon back with Ordinary Rod, and then we just have a bunch of supporters. We do run two copies of Sharon's Care, so we can run this just like a regular Arceus Beaverell deck and Sharon's Care Loop if we don't want to use the Lycan Rock for some reason. We do have a couple of Marnian Researchers, Draw Support, a couple of Boss's Orders, a Raihan, a Roxanne. We got a lot of stuff going for us. So if our opponent goes ahead and does knock out a Lycanroc VMAX, they go down to three prizes. Well, then we can immediately Roxanne path them and, you know, then just kind of play the rest of the game as an Arceus and Teleon deck with Bibro as a draw option. So a lot of reasons to maybe play this deck or at least try it out. I'll be super honest with you, I do not know how it will do against Palkia. One of the things is that you can knock out Palkia Vs really easily with the uh, Max Edge and uh, Choice Belt, which is really cool. And we're able to keep, keep a really clean bench, really tight bench with one Arceus, uh, one active Pokemon, and a Beaverall. So we don't ever really need more than two Pokemon. We do have a Luminion in case we want to... Uh, you know, find a supporter. We need to find a boss for game. We need to find a Roxanne. We need to find something. We do have the option of finding it because unlike Inteleon with Shady Dealings where we can just like, oh, I'm just going to evolve a Drizzile and get whatever I want. Beaver out here, we kind of have to hope we draw into it, which is why we run such a high quick ball, ultra ball count where we're just going to discard stuff and hope that we can thin our hand out, thin the deck out and draw into the pieces we need. But sometimes you need a little bit of help finding that last boss for game. And that's where something like uh, the Luminion comes in. Another reason why I really do like Lycanroc here. Uh, this, this, I like Lycanroc. That's a lot, of, a lot of likes in that one sentence. Anyway, if your opponent gives you a single prize Pokemon to offset the prize trade. And you're like, well, there's so many Inteleon decks. I could, you know, maybe you throw in an Echoing Horn. And you say, okay, well, I only need one prize. They gave me a one prizer. I knocked out two Vs or two V stars, whatever. I just need one prize left. You can Echoing Horn a Sobble and then go ahead and Hunting Claw it for game. So you might not even need the boss depending on how things go. So Echoing Horn could be a really nice tech for this deck. Uh, maybe you want a second Luminion. Maybe you find out like, you know what? Mew isn't as big of a deal or it's not as big of an issue. I don't need the Mighty Ina. I, I draw into it at wrong times. I start the Puccina for some reason, somehow. Um, you know, you could you could definitely drop that for something else. Um, the Air Balloon's going to help get things out of the active that we might not want. Then we can Starbirth for these things. We can Starbirth for an Air Balloon. We can Starbirth for a Big Charm or for, a, you know, Double Turbo Energy, whatever. Speaking of, we do have four Double Turbo and seven Energies. So, that's pretty much the deck. I mean, there's really... It, it, <laughs> It kind of feeds on Arceus and Teleon decks. The one big issue you have to worry about, or the one concern with Arceus and Teleon decks, is that they can use Shady Dealings to find an Ordinary Rod, put that Dunsparce back into the deck, and then use like a Level Ball Quick Pull to put it back into play. But by then you have already, you hopefully will have taken at least a couple of prizes. So, uh, you know, something to be cautious of or, or mindful of that is one of the reasons we do run two v maxes so that we can set up a second one if we need to 
once they use that ordinary rod or if you're able to you know if, if there's a scenario where like you are they already use their ordinary rod or you're picking off their salvos or something and they're it, it's just you have to play that that hunting called dunsparce play pretty quickly before they're like they're still trying to establish their board and before they have like all these salvos that and drizzles that they can scoop up that and tell you on you want to really make sure that you can get a lycanroc powered up which it's nice because hunting claw does only require one you can also use a lycanroc v and boss up a dunsparce uh and then hit it with rock throw and then it's kind of stuck in the active so that if they do bring up like an arceus for example they hit you for 180 then you evolve into the v max you can put 30 damage onto that dunsparce it's ko'd you you know there's maybe something you can do there but you will be giving up three prizes. They'll be in two prize territory, but you know, there's, there's, there's some options that we can take here. That's the biggest concern I have with this deck aside from like, I have no idea what the Palkia matchup is, is Ordinary Rod, Level Ball, get that, that, um, that Dunsparce back immediately. But again, you don't have to play this with Lycanroc if you don't want. You can turn this into an Arceus, Italian, well, like into an Arceus Bibarel deck and basically play it just like that. You'll probably lose that matchup because they have the dedicated Sharon Care loop that they can find easily with Scoop Up Net and Talions. You don't have it, you have to hope you find it or put down an easy two prize KO with Luminion. So, like I said, the sleeper deck, can it work? Yes, is it the greatest deck in the world? Probably not, but it's something that I think is worth trying. We're actually not gonna do any games on the ladder because the ladder is all over the place and i don't really think it's worth it to uh to show i think arceus with uh bebro with like has been around and so i think maybe we just bring it back that's kind of the whole point of this right just to talk about a deck that i think could be brought back in some capacity even if it's not top tier just maybe give you a slightly better matchup against all these arc intel decks but yeah, that's gonna do it for us today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, found this a little informative. If you did, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think of this deck. What is your preferred Arceus Intel counter, or what are you dealing? What are you using to counter the meta at the moment? And uh, yeah, that's, that's like I said, that's gonna do it for us today. Thanks so much, and I will see you next time.